So um, you mentioned two books in particular. First is Donald Lowe's Hard Choices, and then the other one is To Yu Yin's book. Um, what does what inequality look like? Um, could you explain like uh, I guess your take on their viewpoints and so yeah. So I think uh, we need to understand who um, Mr. Donald Lowe is. So he was uh, previously a uh, you know professor at Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy. He's considered one of Singapore's uh, top uh, public intellectuals, but he has now uh, you know been operating out of Hong Kong, right? He has written numerous books, and I would say that our book really is a response to his book, which is called Hard Choices: Challenging a Singapore Consensus. And I would say his entire book rests mainly on the first chapter. That I would say is his main you know uh, uh, trust you know of the whole book. And this chapter is titled The Four Myths of Inequality. The Four Myths. And in this chapter, he argues that the PEP government has perpetuated four myths, which are essentially wrong. And he uses that to conclude that therefore we need more minimum wage, we need the welfare state, we need more redistribution. Right? So what, what are these four myths that he has accused the Singapore government of perpetuating? Let me read it out for all of us. First, inequality is a necessary counterpart of economic dynamism and competitiveness. That's a myth, according to him. The PAP has, is wrong to say that. Therefore, we need more redistribution. Second myth, the best way to help the poor is to help the rich. That is a myth. That's wrong. So therefore, we need redistribution. Uh, the, the third one, inequality is not really a problem as long as there isn't extreme poverty and incomes are rising across the board. That's a myth according to him. Therefore, we need redistribution. The fourth one, since pay is tied to ability, rising inequality is simply the result of increasing differences in people's ability. That's a myth and therefore we need redistribution. Now, what is our take on this? I would say that the way he has presented these points right, is actually very disingenuous and very misleading. Because he uses half-truths over here, right? It's partly true, but partly wrong, right? So let's take the first one. Inequality is a, is a necessary counterpart of economic dynamism and competitiveness. Well, it's true and it's untrue at the same time, right? So we are not saying that inequality is the driver of economic growth. That inequality is a necessary part, you know, of a good society, of an economically healthy society. But what we are saying is that if we allow people to be free, to pursue their own plans, to make their own choices, to work in jobs they want to work, right? Naturally speaking, some will be poorer than others. Some will make more money than right. others, right? right? And that's a natural fact of life, right? Okay. If, I, if, I, if I want to make everyone, you know, the same, then I'm actually going to have to force people to make the same choices, right? right? To work the same jobs. So, so it is indeed true, yes, when we have a, a healthy economy, when there is economic growth, you know, there will be some level of inequality. But that is a reflection of people's differences. That is a reflection of the free choices that people make. And I don't see what's wrong with that. Right. right? And, and just, just very quickly, right, I, off the top of my head, I have recounted many times where PAP politicians, Lee Kuan Yew himself included, that have acknowledged that inequality we, and that the Singapore society, if we want to advance into the age of globalization, we need to learn to tolerate inequality. So that, that statement in itself strikes me as casting inequality as a necessary evil and not so much as Donald Lowe is presenting it as a driver and, and like a, a sort of like a causation factor. Yeah, and moving on to the second myth which he alleges is that the best way to help the poor is to help the rich. That's complete rubbish. That's complete rubbish because there is no self-respecting development economies or, you know, we don't even talk about free marketers like me, people who actually study uh, economic development at a very high level. Economists who are experts in this topic, who make trips to Africa and all that, who, who study all the different causal drivers. No one would say, if we want to help the poor, we need to help Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates have another billion dollars. No one has ever said that. Right? Mm. So I think what we are saying, what many economists are saying is that if you want to help the poor and the rich, in fact anyone, you need to have an economy that rewards entrepreneurship, that rewards wealth creation, that rewards business growth, that allows people to get a job, 
to earn an income and to make a living, right? And that means economic freedom. Countries that are economically free have higher economic growth and less poverty, right? So yes, so it is true that we want policies like cutting taxes, to have less regulation on businesses, right? To have minimal uh, social safety net system. It is true that these are the policies that we advocate, but that does not mean that it's pro-rich, right? It's not trickle down you know, economics, yeah. which is a very common, uh, you know, a pejorative you know, yeah. that, that they, you know, people on the left like to, 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 to use against us. Yeah, I think that's exactly what like Donald is trying to, uh, Donald Lowe is trying to tease out with the, this second myth, right? He's trying to say that, oh, look, uh, if you are advocating for tax cuts, in some way, you just want to help the rich. Because obviously, the ones who will get taxed the hardest are the most wealthy. And this whole trickle-down economics uh, uh, narrative, right? I think it's just, it's just so politicized to the point where it has, it's, just so, it's just so meaningless, right? Like, the idea that you're going to have... So the argument is that if you want tax cuts, you just want to uh, give more money to the rich and the rich will invest in more businesses and properties. And then over time, the wealth will trickle down to the poor. But if you look at the way, it's just using very common sense logic, right? If you look at the way the economy actually works, right? It's trickle up rather than down. If I have $5 million, I start a business and I want to hire, say, 20 workers, right? Immediately, I'm going to have to start paying them wages. And businesses don't turn a profit or until like several years later. So what, what is this, where, where did this notion come from that like, um, I, I, I'm gonna like fatten my own pockets in the immediate short term and then like the, my workers, um, the so-called lower and middle classes, they are going to get the money way, way later after the wealth has trickled down to them. It is in fact the exact opposite, right? I have to pay them right now and then, unless of course you find a worker that's crazy enough to say that, oh, you can pay me one year later. Well, obviously not, right? And and, and as the entrepreneur, I'm taking such a huge risk. How am I going to know that my business venture doesn't fail? If it fails, it's all on me, you know? Like none of the workers are going to face the repercussions. They may lose their job, sure, but I'm going to take on massive debt if I fail my, my, my business venture. So like the whole notion of like trickle down economics, I mean, like I don't even remember a single famous economist who, who actually advocated this uh, so-called theory. complete rubbish. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a very politicized term, honestly. Yeah, and I guess my my my, my quick ray note to like people who believe in this theory is that if you, it's fine if you believe in tax cuts. Uh, sorry, it's fine if you believe in wealth taxes, but you need to shift your your argumentation away from this so called trickle down theory because it's just not a it's not even a thing in in between economists. And and I think what you have highlighted is the shocking lack of uh, of real economic rigor in a lot of the writings of these uh, academics in the Singapore context, right? And moving on to the next one, which I think is even more shocking, is the idea that inequality is not a problem as long as there isn't extreme poverty and incomes are rising across the board. Well, yes and no. The response, yes and no. It is true to some extent that why should I be concerned about how many cars that Jeff Bezos has, as long as I have a decent life, as long as I'm able to earn an income and my incomes and my life is actually improving over time. So in that respect, this statement is actually correct. But it's not fully correct, right? Because economists like us, okay, and I study this in, in, in a very in-depth way, right? So I think the answer is, how is the inequality generated, right? If inequality is a result of the free choices of people to exchange goods and services, then yes, the overall result may not be a bad thing. But many times in many developed countries, the inequality that we see is because of what we call rent-seeking behavior, which is where firms and certain business people, they get special privileges, special favors, because they're close political connections with the government. And because of that, they get rich at the expense of everyone else. And that is wrong. That is not inequality that results from a free market. That is unjust inequality. And we totally acknowledge that. We completely acknowledge that. But this difference, right, this distinction that we drew is completely absent in Donald Lowe's analysis, or should I say lack of analysis. 